Audio products are not something that I usually cover on the channel, but since I've made a few upgrades to my own audio setup for gaming, I wanted to share that. I feel like this is very close to an end game audio setup for me. Everyone's needs are different, but I feel like a lot of you might be after something very similar. Mainly, I wanted to share this right here. This is a really neat audio interface that I stumbled upon after searching for a couple of days, trying to find exactly what I was after. And this is pretty much exactly that. So I wanted to quickly share this new setup with you guys today. Let's take a look. So these upgrades came about as lately I've been playing a lot more competitive titles like Valorant. In-game sound cues are fairly important, but I'll be honest, as long as you have a good enough pair of headphones that can be driven to a reasonable volume, those sound cues are hard to miss. This isn't a video about how a certain DAC or amp can give you some mind-blowing audio experience, but instead just sharing a setup that I've found to work really well as someone who enjoys competitive titles. Because there, your input is arguably more important than the output, and this setup has made bringing those two things together a great experience. So let's start with the interface, which is the Audient Evo 4. It's a fairly compact audio interface with a ton of features packed into it, a lot of them that I think gaming focused setups like my own will benefit from. Here's a bit of an overview for those who have no idea what this is or what it does. Basically, it allows you to connect and power your microphone and headphones and also gives you full control over gain, volume and monitoring. You get two XLR inputs with preamps, a headphone jack output at the front, stereo speaker outputs at the rear and if you're a gamer slash musician, you've also got a JFET instrument input at the front. Now to start with, I'm a big fan of the clean all black design that doesn't create a huge eyesore for your gaming setup. I feel like that is definitely a common trend when it comes to these audio interfaces. The construction is just plastic, but thankfully it has a nice matte finish. Just keep in mind that it could get fairly scratched up if you're throwing it in a backpack or something like that. The single dial at the top is responsible for microphone gain control and headphone volume, and I found that to be really useful for quickly adjusting volume without having to alt tab out of your game. If you want to adjust the gain of either of your microphone inputs, you just press the input that you want and simply rotating the dial will manually adjust the gain. So so if your friends tell you you're a bit too loud or too quiet, you can quickly make that adjustment. And this leads me to one of my favorite features about the Evo 4, and that's that you can easily control the mix between your own mic audio and your in-game audio so effortlessly. Basically, you'll be able to mix the audio between your own voice with zero latency and what you hear in-game. To do this, you press the mix button that's above the volume button to the right, and then rotate the dial to your preferred mix of voice input and system audio. All the way to the left will be 100% mic input and no in-game audio, and then all the way to the right will be just as you'd be gaming normally, 100% game sound with no voice reference. And personally, I'm not a big fan of that default approach where you can't hear your own voice at all. In my opinion, that makes you feel a bit closed off from your surroundings. Open back headphones do help with this, but some slight real-time mic monitoring can make talking and gaming at the same time feel a lot more natural. I will mention that you've also got a smart gain button for your mic inputs if that's something that you don't know how to set correctly, this will do it automatically for you. However, I did find this to set the levels that were kind of ideal for recording and not for a live talking or gaming volume. So if you're going to be using this for gaming like I am, you're most likely going to want to set this manually. The Evo 4 does have a headphone amp, so if you do have a high impedance headphone like the Sennheiser HD650, those will be no problem to drive. What I'm using for now though are the Sennheiser and Mastrop HD58X Jubilee, which I'm a big fan of. These don't need an amp to get reasonable volume and life out of them. Pretty much any onboard sound from any motherboard that I've used can power them no problem, but the Evo 4 does make that a bit easier. They are an open back headphone, so the audio does bleed out quite a bit, but as many of you probably know though, the benefit of this is a much wider sound stage compared to closed back headphones. So directional and positional audio is a lot better here compared to say a lot of gaming headsets, for example. But it's the sound from these headphones that I love the most. They're a really easy headphone to listen to, especially over long periods of time. The sound is what I'd call fairly close to neutral and a reference, very clean with 
without much emphasis on either end of the frequency spectrum. At the same time, I wouldn't call these a flat or boring headphone. Many have said that these have slightly more bass and fun than the HD 6XX. I also find them super comfortable even after a full day's use. Out of the box, the clamping force is a bit strong, just like a lot of Sennheiser headphones, but this will loosen up over time. Overall, I can easily recommend these. You can pick them up for $170 currently on a mass drop. And remember, these don't require an amp, which I see as a huge selling point. Now comes the last element of this gaming audio setup, the microphone. And here I recently upgraded to the Shure SM7B. And yes, I know this mic is incredibly overkill for gaming, but I also picked this up for any potential voiceovers that I wanted to do here at my desk and also for future live streams. For those who don't know, this is an incredibly popular microphone with a ton of history behind it. And I see it recommended all the time from a lot of enthusiast audio channels. I will note that to properly drive this microphone to a reasonable gain for things like streaming and gaming, the preamps on the Audient Evo 4 were just slightly not enough and I did need to use this in addition. So this is the SE DM1 Dynamite inline preamp that boosts the signal from the Shure SM7B by an additional 28 dB without any additional noise or hiss. So with the SM7B plugged into this and then into the DM1, I set my gain to around 60% on the Evo 4 and that gives me a nice level without any clipping. And one of the main reasons I decided to go with the Shure SM7B over other microphones is because of how good this mic is at rejecting noise and room echo that isn't your voice. So for example, lots of gaming setups are untreated. That means that they don't have sound absorption panels and things like that to absorb that echo. So although this is a very expensive gaming microphone at 400 US dollars, it does work really well as a gaming mic because a lot of that echo just doesn't seem to be picked up. And then with the Rode NT USB, which is the previous mic that I was using, and this mic did serve me well for the three years that I was using it, but I do think the Shure mic sounds a bit more natural and this one just doesn't sound as good in my opinion. Uh, this also picks up a lot more system noise, keyboard noise and things like that. And especially room echo, which was one of the main reasons that I wanted to upgrade. And back to the Shure SM7B now for another reference. This is what it sounds like in a completely untreated room no sound absorption panels or anything like that. And I think it does a really excellent job of you know, minimizing the amount of echo that is picked up from the mic. And that's exactly what I was after. I'll also mention that this is without any EQ or frequency adjustments that I don't really plan on doing anyway. This is just the complete out of the box sound, which I plan on leaving because I think it sounds nice and natural. So overall, pretty happy with this new audio setup. Everything just works. And I'm glad that there's not a whole lot of parts that need to kind of get everything working without any problems. It also has a very small footprint, which I'm a huge fan of. And I'll be the first to say that for gaming, this is an overkill setup, especially the microphone and audio interface. I mean, your teammates don't really care if you have a Shure SM7B or an Antlion mod mic. I mean, the difference probably isn't really there, but for me at least, I do appreciate the difference. And like I said, for live streams and any desk recording that I'm doing here, the Shure SM7B can definitely come in handy. So maybe you have similar use cases to myself or you're just interested in some of these parts. I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.